So with that, um, let's uh, uh, let's go through conceptual questions and um, uh, see how well perplexity does with these Gauss's law questions. Um, yeah. So let me open up perplexity, and I'm gonna start doing uh, using perplexity um, or have it do new thread each time. I think uh, in the last few times I've used it, I've noticed it becoming more batty um, <laughs> when I when a particular thread goes on for too long. It um, kind of gets stuck somewhere. So I'm just gonna start with a new thread each time. Um, and you know, each time I, I have paid account, so I got 600, way too many uh, copilot usage. So let me try just uh, copying and pasting this whole thing. And there should be a kind of accessibility feature that pastes in the description of the image, I think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so this is the image description. Close the surface with the net zero flux. And then I will say the figure above. Shows an arrangement, answer the following questions. All right, let me ask that and then properly with the question. Uh, is Netflix through a closer face always zero? Um, no, not if there's a charge inside. <laughs> yeah, so that's that part. An open surface is a surface that can depth flow through place in a region of... Uh, uh, yes, if you orient it in a way where the dot product ends up being zero. Let's see. So A, the net flux is not always zero. Good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did I mention Gauss's law here? Oh, I didn't, but it's... Uh, Wow, yeah, but it's bringing in Gauss's law. According to Gauss's law, the electric field close equals the yeah enclosed the charge. So if there's a net charge inside, um, so if it will be zero if there's no net charge inside. But if you place the yeah on your sphere, in, yeah. But if there's a net charge within the closed surface, then the net flux will not be zero. Yeah, and the the net charge can be like you know. Uh, well, I guess dipole is not a net charge. Dipole plus an additional charge. <laughs> the net flux through uh, open can indeed be zero. Yeah, when the surface is parallel to the electric field vector. And the way we define surface and normal, as in um, a vector that's a perpendicular to a surface area. Um, so the when the surface is parallel with the electric field vector, the dot product between the surface normal and the electric field vector will be 90 degrees. And uh, the way we define flux, that will be zero. Making the scalar product, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, and I mean, um, depends on, is it the open surface? Uh, another way you can also have it is you can have open surface be like a curved surface and you can kind of shape it in a way um, where the uh, electric field kind of goes through one part and then out through the other in the wrong direction. Um, so this is a bit of a strong line, but I, I, I think I'm nitpicking it too much. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit of a, a what is the phrase? Um, uh, Contrarian, uh, when someone makes a claim, my first instinct is to look for counterexample. <laughs> so when someone claims this, like being parallel is a necessary condition, I'm looking for counterexample. But at, at this level of uh, course, I think that, that kind of slight bit of carelessness is fine. Uh, if the electric flux, okay, I think that's all the questions. Let's see. Is zero, then is the electric field, it's not necessarily zero at all points. Uh, can there be electric charge? Yes, uh, as long as they add up to net zero. What is the net charge? Yeah, that is zero. <laughs> what if any are the constraints on what charges can be present? No, no constraints at all whatsoever. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, electric field necessarily zero? No. Uh, so, a good example um, of where you have uh, electric flux or closed surface zero, but Electric field is non-zero. Like imagine having a dipole inside. The dipole can pro be tr producing non-zero electric fields around, and when you add up fields going out with the fields coming in, they will add up to zero. Um, yeah, yeah. Number of electric field lines entering and leaving. Yeah. 
can there be electric charges present? Yes, yes. As long as um, yeah, equal amounts of positive and negative charges, like a dipole. Um, and therefore, yeah. Okay, what is the net charge inside the surface? Yeah, invoking Gauss's law again. Um, <laughs> pretty well trained. <laughs> I, the question doesn't mention Gauss's law. Um, yeah. So if the electric flux is, is zero, then the yeah net charge has to be zero. Good. What are yeah? There are no specific constraints because <laughs> the Gauss's law only um, constrains what the net charge is inside. Outside, uh, not, <laughs> Gauss's law doesn't place any constraint on uh, uh, the charges outside uh, based on electric flux of the closed surface. Yeah. All right. Um, that that looks good. It's doing well so far in electro electrostatics. Um, so I'll have to paste in and then kind of type out these mathematical expressions. I don't think uh, those copy properly. Gauss's law and Coulomb's law, the one over R squared dependence of electric field are closely related as they imply each other. Um, implies that and implies uh, in particle physics, there are four sources which do not vary as um, 1 over r squared, which is called a long range force, but instead as uh, e to the minus r over lambda uh, divided by r squared. Uh, something called the Yukawa potential is an example of that. Uh, on top of the inverse, there's an exponential the length the scale lambda. Answer the uh, let me see if I can put in um, answer the following two questions for such a field. No, uh, <laughs> how would the net flux through uh, as close become smaller or larger? Um, so as it becomes smaller, it kind of approaches something like a Gauss's law. As it becomes larger, um, the net flux vanishes to zero. Brief uh, between. Um, I'm gonna skip it because. Um, think if you could give that relationship, maybe you wouldn't be asking <laughs> perplexity. Um, the same way, yeah. yeah state. And really with the Gauss's law, um, kind of as your surface gets larger, the increase in how much area increases is exactly canceled out by decreasing the field of strength. That's why that one over R squared dependency is special, like no other, like not like one over R or one over R cubed. Uh, it, yeah. So this is why, yeah, um, yeah. So there would be no uh, law like Gauss's law. Um, Feel this more rapidly. Like you can, yeah, yeah. The net flux uh, containing a charge if it becomes smaller. I mean, net flux increases, but not without a limit. Um, yeah, exponential decay factor has less of an effect. In fact, you know, as R approaches zero, this exponential factor approaches one. That's why I said, you know, it becomes more like Gauss's law. Um, a larger. So this is, um, I wish it would have mentioned that asymptotic uh, approaching of like factor of one. I guess it's fine. Um, the close the surface becomes larger, the decrease. And the exponent has a greater effect, right? Um, so, I don't know. It's missing some bits I wish they would have. Like, I want you to say not just lower net flux, but I want you to say the net flux would approach zero as R approaches infinity. And that's even though these both field strengths would approach zero in both case. But um, again, when you calculate net flux, this R squared dependence is canceled out by the, the R squared in the numerator um, for the factor for area. But here, you know, this being canceled out, you are left with the exponential decay, which will go to zero, a larger R. And it doesn't never mention that. But, um, it's me wanting to see a specific answer out of an open-ended question, which is not necessarily a reasonable thing to expect. Okay, explain the role of symmetry. Yeah, 
Uh, I wonder if uh, it'll get the exact three symmetries, right? Uh, I don't know. Generative AI sometimes it doesn't do well with a, a definitive list. Um, it either wants to bring in something extraneous or it misses something of that definitive list. You know, uh, people like humanities people want to talk about like uh, seven habits of highly successful people, and th then number seven has no meaning. It, like it could have been eight, it could have been five. <laughs> um, but when we say there are three sim types of symmetry where you can apply Gauss's law, there's exactly three. Um, there isn't any other. Um, and let's see, yeah, I think it found all three. A symmetry, please, yeah. Powerful two, three types, yeah, spherical one. That's where um, direction doesn't matter, only distance from origin matters. And cylindrical, um, it's like spherical symmetry except 2D version. There's a kind of circular polar symmetry and one of the other directions you have translational symmetry along, we usually choose that axis to be G axis. And planar symmetry is where um, you have translational symmetry, um, I guess along two of the axis and in one, you can um, put some definite. So this is like a one-dimensional uh, case. Let me see. Um, uh, let me try to trick it, uh, ask it. Uh, are you sh sure there isn't that a, a fourth uh, symmetrical arrangement in which uh, we can apply Gauss's law? My professor asked us to find the fourth. Um, yes. Um, linear symmetry. Um, yeah, that's a special case. Cylindrical symmetry. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Um, no, he specifically mentioned the case of um, infinite line of charge and said that it had a cylindrical symmetry. He was looking for something else. Again, I'm just trying to trick it for fun. Uh, um, it had to do with the rotational symmetry uh, beyond the what is a scene in spherical symmetry? Again, I'm uh, making up stuff, you know, saying something that sounds technical, but when you think about it, it's nonsense. Toroidal symmetry? Now, it would have to say that Gauss's law can't be applied in this case. Now, you will see this when we apply uh, Ampere's law. Ampere's law? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Ampere's law. That or, uh, it's more useful in Faraday's law because the uh, toroidal symmetry is an inductor shape. Um, however, it does. Uh, yeah, in the context of. Yeah, it's, tra it's not straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It's, uh, these are actually pretty good uh, responses. I don't think it has said anything that is actually wrong. Oh. All right, I'm going to stop trying to trick it and uh, just finish up this exercise with the last two questions. Uh, but toroidal symmetry is definitely one thing you will see when we get to, uh, again, Ampere's law with magnetism. And when we get to magnetism, some of the symmetries you won't see, you won't see uh, things like a spherical symmetry that doesn't exist anymore in application of Ampere's law. And um, But one thing that will remain true in application of Ampere's law is that um, the number of symmetrical situations where you can apply it to find of the field, so in case of Ampere's law magnetic field, it's limited. So it's one of those cases where you can actually memorize every single example because there's only so few of them. It's uh, one of the cases where you know memorization actually works. You don't have to um, worry that there being some uh, other exotic situation that you haven't thought of. Because there are so, only so few situations where you can apply. Okay, this is the... Uh, so let me say figure description. Um, label this. Yeah. All right, so that's the figure description. And A charge Q is placing as shown above. Uh, below. Uh, I have to edit that. It really should say shown on right. 
And I know we will charge outside the conductor that is and to the present charge Q explain why or why not. That can be tricky. So it should be yes, it'll feel uh, uh, experience electric field due to presence of Q. But people can be tricked into saying that um, um, people can be tricked into saying that the conductor will make the electric field zero. Let's see. Um, in this, yeah, it in this, I think it's going to get the right answer. It induces a charge along the inner surface. Um, yeah, and the negative, wait, that is the, while well, the induced, the positive charge accumulates on the outer surface, yeah. That's going to generate electric field. Um, no electric field inside the conductor, right? The, uh, does not cancel the external field. Creates its own electric field. Yeah, which can be experienced by charge placed outside the conductor. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 what? Uh, this is because it's in cancel. So there will be some field due to the charge outside the conductor, okay? In other words, uh, so, so far uh, it's correct, but I thought I read something weird with the next paragraph. In other words, the charge outside the conductor will not experience the electric field due to the induced charge on the inner end. Uh, um, I mean, there can be some kind of word play, you know, the field outside here, is it coming from this or from some other thing? But uh, the field outside of this, those fields wouldn't exist if this charge hadn't been there. So I think it's a kind of, um, kind of word play on becoming of a physicist. So again, so this is correct, but I think this is wrong. Um, because so if you are inside the conductor, yes, the induced the negative charges have shielded this positive charge and you don't feel any electric field. But once you are outside the conductor, then you feel the field. So the answer should be yes. Uh, the uh, charge placed outside the conductor experiences an electric field. And that can be said to be due to the presence of this charge because it's a, you know, like, but for causation, but for this charge here there wouldn't be electric field out here for that um, test to charge to feel. So, yeah, yeah, that that last bit is wrong. So, okay, other than that, I think it answered pretty well. Um, I wonder if there's a, so there must have been a, like a source aid. Uh, and archive is usually, people who post on archive are not, uh, I mean, there are crackpots on archive, but uh, there are uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, well, not enough time to read the whole paper <laughs> online <laughs> while I'm hearing this session. Uh, I'll, I'll look at it later and see why, um, where this uh, kind of incorrect interpretation comes from. Incorrect in my view, anyway. So that's... Uh, um, this set of conceptual questions, and um, again, if a uh, uh, generative AI tool like uh, Perplexity helps you interact with the material and understand it better, then again, I don't have objection to that. Um, whatever helps you learn physics can't be wrong, but you you have to be honest with yourself and make sure that you are not using it to cut corners, that you are using it to actually learn material. Um,